trip was a culmination of 15 years of thinking about wanting to go and do this thing. And it did not disappoint. The mountain of Kilimanjaro is much bigger than you can actually comprehend. <laughs> heard about the trip from Nathan. He's just like, hey, I'm going to Africa. Do you want to go with? And I was like, well, why not? This is something that, at least for me, has been on the horizon for a couple of years. And so when we actually realized it could happen in 2019, I just jumped on the chance. It didn't really come together until a couple of years ago when I said, okay, next year, we're going to Kilimanjaro, and it didn't happen. Next year, we're going to Kilimanjaro, and it didn't happen. And then um, I think, you know, like everything just needs its time. And this trip, it was finally time to go and do Kilimanjaro. It really meant a lot to me because it was like this big, audacious thing. It was like, we're gonna go climb the biggest mountain in Africa. Kilimanjaro was never on my bucket list, but it was on Nathan's, and so I feel like I plugged into his dream. And man, when you get there and you face that mountain, it was, it was incredible. I would never have the chance again to climb the tallest mountain in Africa. got into Amboseli, uh, it, it was really interesting because we start going in and we saw like our first elephant um, like off in the distance and we're all freaking out. We're like, oh my God, we're taking so many pictures. Um, and then the driver, he's like, no, let's keep going, let's keep going. And we're like, no, like there's an elephant, like it's crazy. Um, and later, so many more elephants, so much closer, so much better. Finally made it to Amboseli. We got the top up on this thing, and you can see behind me some wildebeests. We've already seen um, some gazelles and a hippo and some zebras. So we're just driving through. It was pretty cool. The Jeep to me that morning was like the coolest thing because I had never been in one, and you know the top comes off, and, and we got to take it off when we went into the safari, into the the park, and. I had always, always wanted to see giraffes in the wild. Our uh, driver, he spotted giraffes in the distance and he just, he zoomed over there and we got to see more than one giraffe, you know, walking across the desert. And for me, that was just, I don't know. And that was just the first day. <laughs> Arka, can you tell me about today? Uh, yes, we had an amazing countryside drive followed by uh, excellent safari and a dinner to remember. That pretty much sums it all up. We pulled out of the hotel and we got out onto the main road and we got out of the truck and I remember just distinctly like looking up at this mountain and like, like almost like this feeling in the pit of my stomach like, oh my God, it's so big, like it's so far away and it's so big and we're gonna go climb that thing. I mean, it took up the entire horizon. It was like it, like this slope, this slow sloping mountain that just kind of like
culminates in like this, this flat topped peak. And, uh, and I was just, I was just awestruck by it. So we, we met our guide and he took us to the border crossing. So we all had to get out of our, out of our vehicle, leave all of our stuff and just have our passport, you know, and, and information in hand. And we walked across the border. We had got to the park gates, the entrance to Rongai route, which was the seven day route that we were gonna go and do. And um, we signed in, signed the guest book, and we we're off. We, well, no, the most important thing was after we signed the guest book, we met our crew. It's one thing to know in your head about this kind of support crew that you have coming with you and another thing to actually see them. You know, there was, there was five of us and there was about 20 people helping us to get up the mountain. Uh, it was really cool, that low area up to Simba. Um, I really liked kind of like hiking down in the trees, but then before long, like really quickly, we got up into the scrubland. Higher and higher up, I didn't realize that like we were going up into the clouds so early. Um, oh, so they weighed us in. Let's talk about the weigh-in, yeah. the, the way. They weighed in the bags. So the porters, the, the staff, they all have a certain amount that they're maxed out at to carry by the government. Yeah. So they all got weighed and they're carrying our big packs up for us and tents and food mm -hmm. and the kerosene cooker and the toilet. <laughs> and they're already ahead of us. Yeah. They're like, they're probably already setting up camp. That's the one thing I was thinking. The weigh-in was really cool. Uh, all the teams just like putting together all of the food and all the gear and that we got like a, a toilet tent and we have a crew tent, yep. we have our tents, our bags. I think I'll give you like a little bit of a tour here. So this one here, this is our mess tent. So actually the whole group, we're all, they're all in there. They're all having uh, tea right now. Okay, so <laughs> we're just having some, some tea and things. Um, go see some of the other things. I'll show you the, um, the kitchen tent. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, it's hot in here. Wow. Hello. Wow, it looks good. I woke up early, just naturally for some reason, and I walked across camp and saw the sunrise. And it was insane because we were sleeping above the clouds and I was the only one watching it. It was so weird to me. Like There was another group of campers there and they were all in their tents and hanging out and I literally stood there for like 40 minutes while camp was, was picked up and just watched the sunrise. As the day went on, like the fog kind of followed us up the mountain, so that was, that was really cool. We kind of like circumnavigated the mountain almost. We had come all the way around from, this, from, the, um, from the north side of the mountain, almost all the way around to the south side that day. 
Second day was just a walk. Like, it was just a really long walk. We got to stop and hang out at a cave, which was really cool. Then we got to our campground, and it was nice because there was this little stream there. We were above the clouds. And for me, you know, I've only really seen above the clouds in an airplane. And the way that, you know, Moenzi and Kilimanjaro are set up, and the way that the clouds come in is just different than anything I've ever seen. I mean, this very well could be cloud nine that people talk about. <laughs> and we hiked to it today. We hiked, we gained 3,000 feet in elevation, I believe. Now we're at our camp, which this is the view of our camp. <laughs> it's amazing. And then the next morning, this Unbelievable sunrise. Uh, unfortunately, the altitude sickness really started kicking in for me about that time, and I really did not feel well. What I struggled with there was just breathing and um, I f it was really mostly breathing uh, because physically I felt, I felt okay but I couldn't get enough oxygen and so I uh, wasn't very coordinated. <laughs> we, we went from, from Kikilewa over to Marwenzi Tarn, and that day um, it felt like a fairly short day, and we were going to spend two nights in Marwenzi Tarn, but um, I, for one, I didn't like Marwenzi Tarn. Great camp. I really liked that camp a lot. That was really cool. That is where we stayed the two nights um, for you know, getting used to the climate and the altitude and just everything because it was so different up there. We were pretty much in the tundra at that point. And then we had a couple cool times where like, like clouds and fog would roll in. Uh, got some really good shots of that. Apparently we found out that drinking coffee is not good for altitude because it increases your blood pressure. So lay off the coffee. <laughs> lay off the coffee. Yeah. So important. unfortunately, I'm gonna have coffee tomorrow morning, <laughs> and then no more coffee until after we've summited, which means I'm gonna go two days without any coffee. Total bummer. Oh, it's hot. So nice. Okay. Food situation for today: pumpkin soup and quiche. Best. Look at the Kilimanjaro from our third day. And the video here, let's see if I can point it out. I don't have a stick. On the left here is Kibo Hut, right about there. And so you can see this white path that goes up the mountain here. That's going to be our summit route. Whenever anyone asks me about summiting Kilimanjaro and they, and they want to know about like what it was like to summit, the thing is, is that it's not just like you wake up and you go summit. Like we woke up in Marwenzi Tarn on the day of our summit and we walked to Kibo Hut, which was, um, it didn't seem like it was so far, but you're at elevation. It was fairly flat, but you spend a long time out in the sun, out in the day and walking over to Kibo Hut, um, maybe three or four hours. And then you get to Kibo Hut you have lunch and then you go to sleep because you're getting ready to go and summit Kilimanjaro that night. Oh man, waking up this morning, it's our summit day. Do you know what time it is? It's like six. It's like 6.15. We're gonna uh, trek over to Kipo Hut and then uh, have, lunch. have lunch, have a nap, yeah. have an early dinner, another nap, and yeah. then sometime 
late at night, 10, 11, 11 o'clock, we're gonna get up and go and summit, so. We're hiking through the night. Yeah, so. On um, the full moon. Yeah, so. <laughs> to um, watch the sunrise. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, but just this morning, overnight, just having trouble sleeping, so I'm just, I'm tired, and I'm hoping that I can get some more sleep up at Kibo Hut, so um, I can feel good about going up. Everyone, I need to know, how's my hair? It's amazing. The day was really long. I mean, waking up in Mowenzi and then hiking across the high desert and getting to the high camp, which, you know, you get there and you're like, wow, this is the last camp. And then you're looking up and you're like, I'm gonna be summiting Kilimanjaro. I was, I was hiking really fast. One of our guides called me Kibo Express, which was really funny to me. All right, we're up at Kibo Hut. Uh, I'm really tired. I haven't, I haven't slept very well the last couple of nights, and I really want to be powered up and ready for tomorrow's summit push. So, I kept my Delta face mask from when we flew over and earplugs, and so, I'm take a little nap. See you later. Tried to rest, couldn't, got maybe half hour of sleep. Then we had dinner, um, and our guy told us, you know, it's time, we're summoning tonight. 4.30 on our day at Kibo Hut, I just woke up from a nap, and uh, I guess dinner is at five o'clock. Which is soon, yeah, it's early dinner. Sort of been, uh, I think, unusual weather. We've got like clouds all swirling around the Kilimanjaro up above us. And, um, we're in the tent and every time the sun shines, it gets like 80, 90 degrees in the tent. Like it's so warm. And then when the sun goes down in the clouds or the wind blows, it like plummets back down to like 50 degrees. And so it's just been really kind of like a strange, kind of strange day. But it was good because I got a little bit of sleep. Um, I'm gonna go have some food and I'm gonna come back and sleep. Um, they haven't told us exactly what the plan is yet, but there's a, quite a few groups up here and I think we're going to be waking up probably around 11 o'clock or so to go and summit. We'll be hiking all the night, all through the night, and then getting up and then coming down after sunrise and hiking. I don't even know till when, probably till noon or something. We're going to go down to a low camp, so that'll be really nice to get down into the thicker air again. But um, this is it. This is the day. We're summiting tonight. Yeah. It's going to happen. And the group, uh, I think everyone's feeling good too. So I am uh, I have a little bit of a headache, but um, I'm feeling good at altitude. Bid is feeling great. You're feeling great? I'm feeling great. Feeling and, great. And uh, Ark is really tired, but I think he's doing okay. Um, Elaine and Tyler are doing all right. So I think we have a really high chance that everyone's gonna make it up, up there uh, tonight. So, sweet. Sweet. <laughs> We're excited. So hiking, hiking up through the entire night, you know, under the stars, under the full moon, which I thought was just incredible. Um, you know, it, it was difficult. It was, pro it was one of the, not probably, it was one of the most difficult summits I've ever done in my life. Prepared for it tonight. Well, I don't know. I'm just like thinking about it. I'm like, eight up, five down. <laughs> I'm thinking about like, even if I'm like in Phoenix at like four o'clock in the morning, I'm like, I don't want to be awake. <laughs> like, <laughs> and now I'm going to be hiking from like midnight like to four in the morning, five, six o'clock in the morning. It's going to be intense. The distance from here to the summit, six kilometer to, to ascend, six, uh, six to eight hours, and to descending, three to four hours back here. So total up and down is about uh, 10 to 12 hours up and down here. You're walking up the scree field and every step or two steps you take you slide one step back. There's all these people heading up and just their, their headlamps are just sparkling and, and twinkling um, against the, the, the darkness of the mountain. Feeling freezing? 
in the hands, sometimes the toes is normal for everybody. Um, I remember really specifically like starting out and I was like, okay, I'm a little bit cold. Half an hour and then we make just short break just for breeze and sip of water and then we continue. Because when you stay longer, you get cold. We got up the mountain maybe midway or so and we were beginning to pass people on the hill that were like just like laying on the ground, like just prone, just like flat on their backs, just like moaning. Like people are having a hard, hard time. And I'm just like thinking like, wow, I'm glad that like we aren't feeling like that. If you don't feel good, don't hide. And it turns out that an hour of sleep plus not proper nutrition equals a rough summit. It was very cold, probably in the 20s, Wind was probably 30 miles an hour plus, and there was no shelter. And I, I really, I reached my point because I was tired, um, and I was very, very, very cold. And Veda looked me in the eyes and she said, if you want to go down, I will come with you, but I know that you have it in you to finish this. And when she said that to me, I just, I just dug down as deep as I ever have. I mean, I was, I was done at that point and I dug down really deep and ended up finishing and we ended up summiting. Um, I remember we were up right around Stella Point and the sun came up and that was like what I had been waiting for for almost seven hours at that point because I was so cold and the wind was just whipping around us. And as soon as the sun came up, I just felt like really reinvigorated because it started warming up. You could start to see better. Um, uh, just everything got better with the sun coming up. And when we got to the top, um, we all just linked up arms. Like all of us just put our arms around each other and we all walked up to the summit sign all together. I give so much you know, gratitude to the guides because they gave us the coats off their backs. They carried our backpacks. You know, They were making sure that we were staying hydrated. They, they kept cheering us on. And when we got to the top, to the true top, and we all, you know, linked arms and, and stepped up to the summit together, that was one of the most accomplishing feelings that I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> I cried. I'm, I'm, I'm not somebody who cries a lot, but um, this, had been, this had been a dream of mine for years. And then there we were, and I knew that all of us had dug down really deep to get there. And I, I think I cried for me, and I, and I think I cried for how beautiful it was that I had so many dear people around me. My wife was there, Veda was there. Um, um, you know, Tyler and Arca, good friends there. And, you know, Elaine, somebody who I'd met in Korea was there, and it was just incredible. Um, it was just you and the mountain. And that was profoundly humbling. And one of the highlights... When people asked me what the summit meant for me, it was that what really matters is the people that you surround yourself with. Because I wouldn't have been able to summit that mountain without those people around me. And I think that that translates into my life too. I really don't know what happened, but I definitely hit a wall as we started going down. How are you feeling? I'm short of breath, uh, a little lightheaded, but we just summited from Jaro, so <laughs> have that going for me. <laughs> just tired. Trouble breathing. My oxygen was really low. It was like in the 60s, uh, which is not a good number when it's it's basically have the oxygen level in my blood that I needed to function. So I, I tend to be somewhat stubborn sometimes, and I don't like getting help from people. I like to be independent, and so having to admit that I couldn't 
walk um, without really tripping and falling down was uh, challenging. I do feel like Raymond managed that well. And so he was in full agreement with me that I didn't need help and I was fine, but he was gonna help me out anyway, just in case. And I allowed it <laughs> um, and I needed it. As much as I even, I didn't admit even to myself that I really needed it, but I did. Because even with, I think at some point there were two people holding me up, one on each side, and I still struggled to plant my feet even then. That day of, of descending down from the summit, like not only did we have to come all the way down and get just a minimal amount of time to rest at the high camp, we had a hike back out. We're back in camp after summiting. All four of us summited. Five? Five, just five of us. Uh, I'm exhausted. Yeah, uh, we've been going since midnight. I, that mountain, that mountain took everything for me. It just like shredded me down to nothing. You almost quit a couple times. <laughs> Good for you for keep going though. The top was worth it. It was worth it. So now we're on our way down to Harambo camp. It's gonna be our low camp for the night after summiting Kilimanjaro today. It's a freaking long day. I woke up at 11 p.m. last night and then hiked all through the night. I don't know, almost 12 hours. We didn't get back to camp until like noon. And now we're going down to this camp. It's nine kilometers away. Back down we go. Kilimanjaro. About halfway down the camp now. You can see in the background here some of the vegetation is coming back. And uh, we're just at these little rest stop here. I think we're gonna take a break and wait for uh, Veda and Arca to catch up, so. And they want us to keep pushing. So we pretty much hiked for like 21 hours straight. So after just days of desolate landscape, it was, it was nice to see something living again. <laughs> finished summiting, I was just smiling ear to ear. I, I, I could not be happier. If you can experience so much suffering together and be so cranky and miserable and still want to talk to everyone else afterwards, <laughs> you know you have some very good friends. <laughs> out 
into the distance and you can see Kilimanjaro and there's this knowing that we, that we all did it. We all hiked Kilimanjaro. <laughs> I didn't really realize gradually as I was getting through here and through here. And I didn't do, I didn't realize what clean felt like until <laughs> tonight when we got to the hotel, had a shower, put on some clean socks, clean underwear, and it was just life changing for me. It was amazing. I forgot what it felt like. And then when I tried to wash my hair, it was just all this dirt going down the drain. Amazing. That screen field up from Kibo was killer. I don't know. And one of the funny things is, I suppose when I edit the video, but I don't have any video from that whole time because it was so awful. I really like, <laughs> very tough to when you're already like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you saw that first glacier off, like the, when you turn left, mm -hmm. that's when I finally grabbed my camera. Yeah. So I have like eight pictures from that. Whole yeah. Time. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think I don't like I don't think I kind of like snapped out of it until we had already passed like Stella Point because. The wind had died down a little bit, and like I had gotten like that, that excitement of getting to the summit. The I adrenaline. Knew, yeah, because I knew that I was gonna push forward and get it. I thought about taking some photos in the video, but uh, I wanted to keep all my fingers.